Alright, carrying on from the previous video, here we use the legacy form tools to create these fields. Now we're going to use the what's called the ActiveX form tools or the, the standard ones, okay, which come along with Word in your developer toolbar. Now I want to show you what we have. So I'm going to recreate this, okay, and we're going to use not the legacy ones like we did before. We're going to use the standard ones that we get at the top here, just so you can see the difference between the two. So the first one is a text box name. So here you can see we have a rich text content control or just plain text. Let's just go with rich text. Rich means that you can format it. You can have formatting like colors and font sizes and things like that. And then you see it automatically says click here to enter or uh, click or tap here to enter text. So there's the first one. Okay, number one. Let's do surname. We'll do also rich text, date of birth. Now what's nice is we actually have a, uh, what's it called, a date picker, date picker. There we go, so there we go, click, haha, -ha, and you're gonna see what that does in a minute. And of course, then we also have our combo box or drop down list. So what's the difference between a combo box and a drop down list? Well, the combo box means that you can select more than one option in a list of items. Whereas a drop down list, it's a list and you can only select one thing from that list. Okay, so I'm going to do a list for now and then show you a combo box in another video. Would you like to volunteer? Yes or no, there is our checkbox there. Let's have a look and see how we can format these. Formatting is pretty easy actually because we just select our, our object, here it is over here, and we go to properties. Voila, click on properties, a title, a tag, show as a bounding box color, use a style to format the text. So you can see it's a little bit different to the options that we had in our legacy tools where we could specify a certain amount of characters and things like that. Here we have more of a uh, design aspect to it. Okay, now we could say contents cannot be edited or the content control cannot be deleted. That's also one way. And I'll show you what this will look like when we lock the thing in a minute. So let's go to date of birth, okay. Voila, very nice. Expertise, let's create a list. Area of expertise, let's go to properties. And a little bit different, but I mean, you can follow what's going on here. Choose an item, let's add an item. So we had um, underwater ice hockey. Yes, it's still around, still around, I love it. Underwater ice hockey. Then we have the, um, here's a new one, toasted. Marshmallow Champion. Let's see if I spelled champion right this time. Oh, I still don't get it right this time. Toasted Marshmallow Champion. Um, I have no idea. You can add a whole bunch there, but you'll get, you'll see what we're doing. Okay. And then, of course, would you like to volunteer? Yes or no. And you can see that as I tick on it, as I click on it, it automatically activates. So let's see again. Back in our developer toolbar, here we are here, developer tab, go to restrict editing, let's see, restrict editing, limit this to editing restrictions, only allow the filling in of forms, okay, go to start enforcing protection, no password please. So let's have a look here. So now you can see again, I cannot enter or edit anything here, I can only click and type in information into the areas that I allow. Again, this is very, very handy, especially if you are doing, there's a drop down list there, you know, I didn't do marshmallows last time, and tick, All right, there we go. So why is this so handy? It's very handy because we can sort of take a little bit more control over how data gets entered into a form. And let's see now what happens once data has been put into our form, how do we extract that data? If we've sent this to a lot of people, where do we then get the data? So let's say you have received this form from someone. You sent them the Word document, you put your form, your elements in there, they filled in the form and they sent it back to you. So you'd like to extract this data now, okay? You could maybe have 10 pages of information here, but I mean, copy and paste is gonna take you too long and to, you know, uh, type it out again, way too long, just crazy. So let's have a look and see here. Go to File and Options, File Options, advanced because this is slightly more advanced stuff okay and if you scroll down your list keep scrolling keep scrolling keep scrolling all the way down to preserve fidelity when sharing this document and it says over here save form data as a delimited text file 
So don't stress about what delimited means right now. That's just what separates your text um, your text um, fields. Okay. Uh, but the most important thing is that you're going to save this as a text file. The data from the fields get saved as a text file, and I'll show you how. So I'm going to click Save Data, Save Form Data as a delimited text file. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. So now when I save this document, it's also going to ask me, what would you like to do with the actual data from the form elements? And here it is here. Do you see it's making a plain text file for me? So I just click OK, save. It just tells me this is what it's going to look like, okay? Everything is going to be separated by semicolons and a comma. That's fine because Excel can then import that and work with that. So I click OK, done. And that's how we get our data out of a form field. It's actually pretty easy. So there you go, forms in Microsoft Word.